Good morning, Chris Shipley, Shipley Pest Solutions. Uh, a snowy February morning. Um, but wanted to, I'm going to show a video and I wanted to describe and explain. This is pretty much your typical yellow jacket nest late summer. Uh, late summer being kind of July, August, um, where the queen will find a suitable nesting site, typically in April, April, May. Uh, I'm in Northern Indiana. And so uh, they will come out of hibernation. Those queens will find a suitable nesting site. Suitable to them means typically out of the wind, out of the prevailing wind, so out of the west wind, uh, not getting rained on directly. Uh, they typically want them high if uh, they can have them lower, as long as they can be protected or inside of something, they will build a nest lower, but they wanna be secure. They don't want animals or anything else um, to be able to just crush the nest, destroy the nest. And so a lot of times yellow jackets, when they build in a house or find their way in a house, they will find their way in, whether it's old coax, old satellite dish, uh, old gas lines, electric lines, uh, that will oftentimes be even in newer homes be sealed up properly with silicone or caulk, uh, but that will deteriorate over time. And so a lot of times as the house settles, you go through a couple winters, that crack, that silicone or that caulk, that silicone will crack and it will start to deteriorate. It'll, you know, expose, have little voids. And oftentimes, you know, a queen in the spring, when she's looking for a suitable nesting site, she might find that she can get in through that pipe take a turn and then she can build her nest in that wall void or on that sill plate specifically. Most of the time they will build them on the sill plate or right inside the crawl space or basement wall. And uh, many times it won't be right at the entrance either. So a lot of times they will go in that entrance, take a turn and even go, I've had them, this video shows, I think it's about three feet. They built this nest from the entrance. Um, but in a basement setting, you know, they've got They've got shelter. A lot, oftentimes, it, like in a crawl space, they'll have insulation there as well. So early on, it can keep that nest nice and cool uh, and insulated. And then in the summer times, you know, crawl spaces a lot of times are, are dark, moist, a little cooler. And so it will help keep that temperature down as well. But uh, yeah, in this video, it shows a finished poured basement. They came in through uh, the heating and cooling line on the outside where the caulk had just deteriorated a little bit. We're coming in and then taking a turn and going about two to three feet to this nest. And it was a pretty decent sized nest. Um, but so the queens will find that suitable nesting site April, May here in Northern Indiana. Uh, and oftentimes you'll find them, they're just a real little shower head nest. So you can count the individual cells. Um, she'll start with fertilized eggs from the winter as she overwintered. She'll deposit those, uh, those will hatch, she'll tend to those. And that's really the riskiest time uh, for that colony when it's just the queen with some fertilized eggs, she's putting them in those um, in those cells. Then once those start to hatch, she'll get her first four, six, eight, and then it just becomes a multiplication game for them. Uh, as we get into you know May and June, those shower cells will start to expand a little bit. You'll get a dozen, two dozen, and they'll still be open. And oftentimes you can kill those uh, pretty easily with just the aerosol over-the-counter sprays. Um, once we get into late June, early July here in Northern Indiana, they will start to enclose those nests. Once they enclose those nests, those aerosol cans that you're buying from the hardware store oftentimes will not do the trick. You're only going to kill the guards or the workers coming and going at that entrance hole because that paper is just mashed up wood pulp and it's waterproof. So unless you can penetrate that nest and get to actually the heart of the nest to spray the larva and the queen and, and all the workers inside, you're, you're wasting money. You're wasting your $15, $18 a pop. So uh, that's going to be late June, early July. And then uh, around that time, those nests are probably around 100 in size or so. Uh, we don't typically start to get a bunch of stinging insect calls until late June, early July. Uh, and oftentimes when we get them, uh, hornets or paper wasps or yellow jackets, those nests are going to be about about softball to volleyball size. And so uh, that's when they become noticeable. So most people, they call us, they find them with the lawnmower in the yard, a uh, nest on the side of the house. Oh, it just showed up. It was just here, you know, and it's August. And the reality is no, that nest was there since May. Um, but as, as they start to multiply and as that queen keeps pumping out eggs and larvae and just once they get to a certain point, 
those numbers can really jump and double very, very quickly those last couple months of summer between July, August, and September. And so um, most of the time when people see them is going to be July. That's when they're sizable and noticeable. Um, you're mowing a yard, hornet nest or something's hanging, you know, volleyball size, hanging off of a tree. Uh, that's when you'll start to see those. So um, just, a, just a kind of a brief education there on, on stinging insects, uh, nest development, sizing, um, and this video will highlight a, like I said, a typical nest when they get in the house and they build a nest along a basement, a crawl space or such. Uh, th this is pretty common. Um, and typically, yeah, we all see the nests at the peaks of the houses, garages, things like that. And they will typically build high or low. Very rarely will they build in between. They will. You might see them on a first story window. They'll build next to there. Um, but oftentimes those nests don't survive. They don't last. Um, so uh, this nest in a basement, a few hundred in size, very typical nest for, uh, I believe it was September uh, is the date on this video. So this would have been last September in Northern Indiana. So uh, I go through the process, finding out where they're coming in on the outside. And notice, I don't, I don't block the hole. Do not ever block tape, spray foam, that entrance hole ever, especially late summer, because then you will have 100 to 300 insects that will literally find an exit. I, I, they're called chew throughs. We get them. We get these panicked calls. Uh, oh my goodness. There's a hundred singing insects or a hundred hornets in my daughter's room. Uh, it looks like a horror movie because they will chew through the wall or the side of the wall. Um, and they will find a way out and it just looks like a horror movie. Cause then you have a whole bunch around that entrance, but, um, don't ever caulk, fill, shoot it with spray foam. Don't ever do that. Cause that's not only is, is that going to increase your chances of creating a sting or a stinging incident, but then when a pest control professional shows up to help fix that situation, if you've hit that with spray foam or caulk or anything, I can't tell you how much I've had to take my knife and cut it out just so I can get to be, to be able to treat that because mother nature is very efficient. Wherever that entrance hole is, is going to be the most efficient place to dust or use product that they're going to track to and from that nest to the nest. And so anytime you block that, then you know, even me, I can be guessing at times when I show up if it's in a wall void. Uh, whereas if that if that hole is just exposed, I can show up. I, I use dust most of the time. That dust will uh, they will track it back and forth. And also, they're very clean insects. And so, what will happen is, is as they land at that entrance hole, if you dust that entrance hole or blow, because we have dusters that will blow back into that void, and that dust travels very very far. Uh, and it very easy to clean up. It becomes inert once you get it wet. And so, uh, not, you know, some long lasting, oh my goodness, you know, it's chemicals. Uh, but depending on what type of dust, the dust products work excellent against social insects, uh, and in which stinging insects are. And so they'll track it back and forth and then they clean themselves. They have to be very clean to fly. And so that's how they'll physically ingest that product. Um, and they'll actually traffic it into the nest. If we can't get to a wall void somewhere, they'll actually do the work for us. So, uh, don't ever plug that hole, caulk that hole, seal that hole. Don't do that. Uh, just call a professional once they get that big. Once they get above a volleyball size, um, that can be a serious stinging hazard and risk. And so um, I, I'm a pretty uh, tight to a dollar person, but that's one of those things that, you know, what's an ER visit versus calling somebody for, you know, $150 treatment or something. So uh, so yeah, this highlights it perfectly. Um, you see them going in, going, and then in the, in the basement, a lot of basements, poured concrete basements are unfinished and they've just built that nest right along on top of the sill plate, which is the wood right on top of the concrete foundation. Uh, they've just built it right there. And so, uh, this particular customer, uh, it was an old storage closet. They go down in that utility storage closet, you know, once every few months, uh, you're not looking up and in a corner. And uh, she uh, just happened to notice that they were on the outside. Uh, I recognized that, went in the basement, saw the nest. And so I chose to, um, I dusted the nest on the outside and then I did remove, I did physically remove that nest from the basement as well. So brought in a trash bag, scraper, things like that. Uh, an aerosol, killed as many as I could in that room. Dusted the outside as well. So any workers trafficking back and forth will also kill them and help expedite that process. Um, and uh, yeah, just took it with me. Uh, we warranty all our work. And so, um, but yeah, this, this video will highlight it perfectly. All right, last one of the day, number five. 
so very common they're going in this AC unit here you'll see them coming and going right through there hello there comes one there they go so they're going in there and building right on the sill plate and I'll show you the basement down here in the basement as you can see that's where they've built so they're right there along that sill plate that line comes in right there they've built probably lengthwise down all right here we are so as you can see right there up top that's actually kind of cool that one that's got the dust all over it so that one's come in through the entrance hole it's got dust on it so that's the beauty of of After tempo that's return. what they're going to do you have all these outside tending the nest. Uh, these guys are building onto it. These are tending the nest up here and they're also guards, so they'll guard the nest. So they're coming in right here, the AC unit. They're going probably almost two feet the one direction to uh, build and you can kind of see they're just building on. And that one's got dust all over it. That one will die pretty soon. It's in panic mode, but uh, yeah. What they'll do.